we're going to be doing, this is uh, uh, going to be a very interesting session. One of the things that's um, remarkable is everybody that I've interviewed at, at um, DLD has mentioned China, um, which is, uh, it's not something new that people realize how important uh, the Chinese market is, but how quickly it's growing and how, uh, how many entrepreneurial companies are coming out of China rather than just being copies of U.S. companies, and some of them are, obviously. Um, so I want to talk about, uh, you know, sort of the digital space in China, and this is someone, probably the perfect person to talk about this, uh, Kai Fu Li, who is, uh, has got a long history at many internet companies, Microsoft, Google, he ran uh, uh, Google China for uh, many years, um, and now he's running an incubator. I think is that the right way to describe it? Why don't you explain what you're doing in China right now? Uh, sure. I left Google 15 months ago, and we have a two-part entity. So it's one half uh, super angel slash incubator, mm -hmm. and the other half is a venture fund to bridge the funding after the incubator, um, after co uh, companies graduate from the incubator. So why did you decide to do that? Why did you leave Google and decide to do this particular, why, you approach it this way? Obviously, you could have worked for another big company, done a bunch of, uh, almost anything. What was your impetus for doing it and in China? Well, I, I think helping young people start uh, inspiring uh, entrepreneurial companies is something mm -hmm. that's really exciting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I've really always enjoyed the part of starting something new. And, and I felt I had a lot to share with all the things I've learned from Google, Microsoft, Apple, and other companies I've worked mm -hmm. at. And, and I thought the timing was right, because if you look at all the great companies that are built, they're often built at the right time. It's often more important that you pick the right time than that you have the specifically the right idea. Right. So, you know, just as uh, software was to, about to take off, that's what took Microsoft. As the internet penetration went up, that was when Google rode that wave. Similarly, in China, there's been multiple waves. And I saw that there was a couple of waves coming, mm -hmm. uh, in particular, e-commerce uh, and mobile. Mm -hmm. And I felt these two waves will create many great companies and that I wanted to be a part of that. So what was the situation in China right now in terms of entrepreneurialism and, and, and funding? There's been a lot of U.S. Uh, venture firms and European venture firms going into China, doing smaller deals, not very significant. I mean, significant, but... And then there's the growth of all these large Chinese companies, Baidu, Tencent, a whole bunch of others. Um, how, do you, how do you assess the situation there and comparing it to where it is in other parts of the world? Well, actually, uh, the early, the smaller early deals are really not that common anymore. Right. Um, most of the largest, larger deals I hear about, most of the deals I hear about are rather large. Uh, most of the, uh, the reason is the VC and PE in China, at mm -hmm. least the top tier, mm -hmm. have had phenomenal returns over the past five years. Right. 50 plus, 50 percent plus uh, IRR per mm -hmm. year. So that's really drawn a lot of money to the China PE, or mm -hmm. private equity space. Mm -hmm. And that's caused m most of the smartest people in, in venture capital to drift towards the later stage. Right. And that's left a vacuum in the early stage. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these smartest venture capitalists you know, have a billion dollar fund at their disposal ready to invest 50, 100, 200 million at a shot. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great for companies that need that type of financing. Mm -hmm. But what's really lacking is what if a uh, young entrepreneur, 25 years old, uh, needs $200,000? Who's going to do that? And that's the vacuum that we fill. And that there are now a couple of angels trying to do that. But by and large, the ratio of angels to late stage is uh, uh, still dramatically um, uh, inadequate. So let's talk about the, 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 at that early stage, because that's in a super important stage for a lot of these companies to come out. Uh, the late stage companies, who, let's talk about them. Who are the most critical, most important companies right now in China, Chinese born, Chinese created? Uh, the ones that are not yet public? Or no, that are either public, public or about okay. to. I mean, obviously, yeah. um, Alibaba is sure. about to go public. I, I think the three most powerful public companies in China in the TMT space mm -hmm. are uh, Tencent, Alibaba, and Baidu. Mm -hmm. uh, these three are very powerful. Uh, they each has a stronger position than their equivalent company in the U.S., mm -hmm. Uh, or at least equivalent. Right. So Baidu is, is the search company equivalent to Google in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, Alibaba is an e-commerce company that's uh, at least equivalent to eBay, if right. not eBay plus a little bit of Amazon. Right. Okay. And, and some uh, Yahoo thrown in. 
and some Yahoo thrown in. Uh, oh. Right, they also do that, yeah. Although right. that's, that part's not doing well. No, Yahoo no. China's not doing well. Right. Um, and then, it's not doing uh, well in the US too, but go ahead. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah, and then um, uh, Tencent, which runs QQ, an instant message service, is a giant uh, game company uh, running on a instant message-based social network. Right. So it's kind of a distorted Facebook mm -hmm. plus Zynga. Right. So it's a very And a little powerful. Twitter thrown in. Um, uh, with of. a little bit of Twitter, yeah, thrown yeah, in. that's right. So those are the three most powerful companies. Yeah. How do they impact the overall culture there, the, the entrepreneurial culture? Because obviously the big companies in the U.S. impact the smaller companies at the same time. Uh, I think the larger companies in China tend to be um, more willing to um, let the small companies innovate mm -hmm. and then sometimes acquire them, but more often copy them. Mm -hmm. So that makes uh, the startup a little more difficult in China. Uh -huh. So let's talk about the startup culture. You're, 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 you're doing uh, early stage companies, you said mobile and e-commerce. Explain what you mean that in detail. What are you looking for? And talk about a couple of the companies you think are promising that you've oh. just invested in. Okay. Uh, we, we actually came a little bit late to e-commerce. Mm -hmm. I started the incubator 15 months ago. Mm -hmm. How much money did you have? How much money do you have at your disposal? Uh, totally speaking, the, the fund and the incubator together is close to $200 million. Okay. So we, we do want to really build the companies in a, in sure. a substantial way. Um, so uh, when we started, I think we looked at e-commerce and we saw that the positive thing is that it's, ta it's you know, really taking off. Mm -hmm. But we were already missing some of the, uh, the, the, the major opportunities. Mm -hmm. There were already people doing... Groupon-like capabilities. Yeah, actually, the Groupon clone in China is actually called Groupon CN, um, which is <laughs> not Groupon, but, and it looks exactly the same. But we'll talk well, about that the, issue later. But. There are 1,600 uh, Groupon copycats. Yes, they are. And yes, that one are. actually isn't doing But I love the well. one that's just called Groupon. That's my <laughs> favorite one. Uh, right, right. It's sort of like having a watch that's like, not Rolex, but Rolex, Rolex, yeah. Rolex with a with Yeah, a they C. figure if they can't sell the company, they sell the domain name at least, right? right? exactly, right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah. of entrepreneurs. Yeah, so, so the e-commerce, we were a little bit late. We saw the B2C was already getting huge. Mm -hmm. um, we made a, some small investments, but uh, truthfully, uh, B2C is, is already getting to be a very tough competition. Mm -hmm. um, every, every B2C shop is doing the same thing. They're discounting, and uh, they're very tight margins. They're all, it's all about pricing and uh, uh, logistics. Mm -hmm. So we're actually not participating in that. What we are able to participate, we're able to participate, it's in mobile. Mm -hmm. um, there are 800 cell phones in China. Mm -hmm. So the Chinese people are completely familiar with using the cell phone, with text, text as well as voice. Mm -hmm. And now that it's connected to the internet backend mm -hmm. service, it's, it's just ready to take off. These are mostly feature phones at this point, correct? Or are smartphones, Android and iPhone making? It's currently a uh, very large percent of uh, our, our feature phones. Right. But there are now over 10 million uh, iPhone and Androids in China. Mm -hmm. And that number will go up dramatically. And the reason is uh, the, the, cost of, uh, I, the cost of Android is going dramatically lower. Mm -hmm. um, and be, because in, in the US and in Europe, the cost of the phone is largely subsidized by the carrier. Mm -hmm. And in China, that is not so. Right. Um, you buy the phone separately, and then you buy the plan, and you put the two together. So that means a phone, and, and an iPhone is seven or eight hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and an Android could be six or seven hundred dollars, and that's way out of range for an average young Chinese person, who, which is the exact audience that's going to be using the mobile smartphones. Right. So the the good news is that the Chinese infrastructure is completely ready to take advantage of this to to reduce the price because the ODMs, the manufacturers, are all located in China. The cost reduction is happening there. Uh, so that's, that's going well. The challenge is, what is the standard operating system they'll use? Um, with Google's decision to not do censorship for China, including search, marketplace, maps, and so on, that makes using Google software very difficult. Mm -hmm. so, one of, so the companies we invested in, we actually invested in about four companies, that basically uh, tries to uh, become the de facto Android provider for the hardware manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So we would take the Android open source 
and we would rebuild the Chinese user interface and we would have a music player that fits the Chinese user. It has a karaoke okay mode. So you're essentially using Google without using Google. You're trying to like pretend it's not Google. Well, the, the services are not The service. Good. No, it's in the yeah. Android system. Yeah, Android so system. We, we did all the services. The contacts are done right. The e-books uh, are very different from the way you purchase on, on uh, iPhone or Android. The e-books in China are free, uh, and you read about 70%, and then if you want to see the ending, you've got to pay. <laughs> okay, so, so, so these are the things we do to make it fit the Chinese users. The, the yeah. Chinese users are not used to That's paying. That's a good business model for a lot of people. I'm it could thinking. work in the U.S. It could know? work for a lot of things. Yeah, do. yeah so basically we, we, we have a company building the marketplace, another company building an iTunes-like PC companion, mm -hmm. another building an operating system, and, and, and that's a set of companies we built. Uh, we also have invested a lot in games. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese companies actually lead the world in terms of virtual currency. We talk a bit about Chinese companies copying from time to time, but in well, terms... Well, I want to ask that question because it, well, well, from time to time is pretty much a lot of the time. <laughs> a lot of the time, and I'll, and I'll answer it. Uh, but in terms of gaming and the use of the, f the games being free to play, mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then you pay for their virtual goods, that's actually invented by the Chinese, Chinese companies. Mm -hmm. and, and the Chinese gaming ecosystem and uh, know-how in determining fancy game, gaming uh, 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 gameplay mm -hmm. so as to attract users uh, there's a lot of leadership in China. So let's we're starting a lot of games. Let's talk about that leadership too. the ability, because I think it's a very common, um, maybe it's a myth, but it, you do see it happen over and again. There's some U.S., mostly U.S., sometimes European ideas that then get to China, and there's 1,600 Groupon clones. I'm sure there's 17,000 versions of Farmville there at this point, or Mafia Wars, or something. well. Uh, but where, 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 where does the innovation from China go the other direction? When do you imagine that happening? Well, just, just for the record, the, fir uh, the first farm game, as it stands, came from China. Okay. And if anything, the Farmville was a knockoff of the Chinese okay. uh, vegetable right. game. Right. Although one, one interesting difference is the Chinese farm game, you don't collaborate to build, to, to, to build your farm. You uh, steal vegetables from each other. Oh, okay. So there's a little, <laughs> little bit of difference there. <laughs> What about the Mafia game? What, what happens there? The Mafia game was, uh, uh, there was, there was one clone uh, based on Zynga's success, mm -hmm. and then it was uh, determined to be inappropriate, and, and it was removed. Really? Because it was uh, uh, encouraging criminal behavior. Okay. So the, the they don't mind stealing vegetables, but <laughs> shooting each other is a no-no. Well, also, they said, don't call it stealing vegetables anymore. That's not good either. Okay. So the, fortunately for stealing vegetables, they just changed the name to picking your neighbor's vegetables. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but mafia Borrowing. wars. I'm but mafia bar wars, what can you do? Yeah, you know, that's The true. whole game was yeah. removed. Yeah. Bada-bing, that's the end of that. Um, so but when, does that, when does it begin to drift from China? Where, where is the... Um, I don't say the Google, but the, the, the Groupon of China that comes over to the U.S. or anywhere else in the world that becomes a viral success and then moves. What has to happen to, to create that? Yeah, so, so to be fair, you know, you're absolutely right. The, mo most of the copying is going from U.S. to China, mm -hmm. not the other way around. I gave you right. one exception, right? right? Um, when is it going to really change in any dramatic way? I, I think in terms of uh, paradigm shift, big innovation, I think China will have a hard time. I think it'll be a relatively long time mm -hmm. before China has something really significant, okay, like um, you know, an Apple, uh, iPhone, or, or a Google, or a Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, smaller innovations, I think we're already seeing. Uh, the area that we're seeing that I'm most, uh, I feel most likely to happen soonest is gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese games are actually among the most sophisticated in terms of the ecosystem and fancy gameplay that attracts users to go deeper and deeper and, and more and more attracted to games. Mm -hmm. So the Chinese games are a major export now, not to the U.S., but to developing countries. Developing countries. So um, uh, Vietnam, for example, and other Southeast Asian countries. So I think the route in which the Chinese um, games or other Internet companies will probably go to third world countries, uh, BRIC countries, and then eventually perhaps... Uh, uh, Europe and U.S., but that, that's, that's a long, longer term. 
The other area is, is I think that's inevitable, is mobile. Mm -hmm. Just because China has such a large number of users, and, and, and I think one of the reasons U.S. became very powerful in the Internet was the large number of users in the U.S. Uh, in the, in using the Internet. And the users makes an experimental basis. Mm -hmm. So I think mobile will be another big area. So when you, when you talk about uh, doing business in China, what is to you the most difficult part of it? Is it the censorship issues around it? I mean, not being able to do it if in the United States, if, if it was mafia wars, or like add more guns and put, throw in some prostitutes we can shoot. Let's add those in. Um, you know, that's encouraged, and it's, you know, kind of thing. Is it, is it the censorship issues? Is it the con government control? Is it the, is it the, the chaos of, the, I mean, the, the amount of people in the competition? What do you look at as an entrepreneur, having worked in the U.S. and in China? Sure. I, I think as an uh, Chinese, I mean, we're incubating Chinese companies right. now, right? Right. So I, I don't think there's a lot of difficulty related to government regulations. Um, the censorship is something we have to deal with, but it's not difficult. And, and the government expects companies to self-censor. So if you know what can and cannot be done and said and done, and you take care of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a problem. And you try well, it's to... it's a problem well, it's a, on a larger scale. On a, right, on a larger scale. But for the company to operate and become profitable, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something... Do you imagine not, that changing at any point? Is the government more aware of the need? Like Facebook in China, yeah. for example, yeah. not coming there for why? Mm -hmm. Well, Facebook is inaccessible in China. Right. Right. The government blocked it. Right. So that, uh, I don't know. It's also blocked in other countries. Right. And I, I, I wouldn't be able to predict when it might be unblocked. And why uh, do you imagine it's blocked in China, for example? Well, the content that's, huh. that's on it, the, the various groups. Uh, it's probably for a small percentage of the content right. that that's, uh, appear to be illegal or offensive. But does the government need to open up more in order to attract this kind of um, vibrancy, or is there plenty going on in gaming and other areas that aren't quite as controversial? Well, I think the long-term trend in China is absolutely going to open up. I think I'm very optimistic that will happen. But when I say long-term, I'm talking, you know, more than 10 years. Right. And for many well, people... Well, it's China, it could be 400 years, but go ahead. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be that long. Yeah. I think it's in the order of tens of years. Uh, China will will open up, but mm -hmm. but it's it's uh, that's that's too long for some people. Mm -hmm. But in terms of building uh, valuable companies, uh, that that's not really not something that impedes us in any way. Okay. Any questions for the audience? Because we have a very short time now. Anybody have any questions? Go ahead. What, he, she's asking what the top thing that okay. U.S. companies yeah. do. What are the top things we're likely to get wrong going right. into China in today's environment? And also just for yeah. the preface, China's been a disaster zone for most U.S. companies from yeah. eBay to Google. It just goes on and on. Right. Sure. I think the most common mistake is uh, feeling China's another one of those countries. And therefore, let's just do what we've done in Europe or whatever countries where the expansion was easy. Uh, China is substantially different in terms of region, uh, usage patterns, uh, government regulations. So it really needs to be dealt with separately if you care about that large market. So I think in simply speaking, the kinds of mistake I've seen made are uh, uh, requiring a global platform that makes local operation difficult, um, not hiring a local team that knows how to do things locally, but, uh, uh, but, yeah, but, but try to bring in a bunch of Americans to try to figure things out. Um, and, Those Americans. <laughs> Americans is what we call ourselves. And, and, um, and I think not listening humbly to users. Um, because I think, I think when a company can be really successful, uh, what they don't realize is that a, a local competitor can be almost as good in the product but more local, and that in aggregate is more appealing to the local user. Okay, one more question. Right I wish, Just, if it's a short question, yes, we'd like to take it. He's sitting right here. Yeah. Right. Um, 
there's definitely a new bubble. There's been others, but go ahead. There's definitely not a bubble in China. There are specific IPOs recently that are overpriced. <laughs> oh. that, that may get corrected. Uh, there may be specific rounds in China that are overpriced. But I see that overpricing to be a factor of two or three. And uh, when the economy is growing that fast, and the internet and the mobile space is growing that fast, just imagine if something is overpriced by 2x, and the economy and the internet scene is growing really fast, in a year or two, you catch up. So I think this, uh, there is overpricing going on in specific areas. But I think the growth is so phenomenal that, uh, that I, think, I don't think there will be uh, any sort of uh, a bust. This is my last quick question. The most interesting or strangest company you're funding? The, something unusual, very briefly. Something very unusual. That you found really exciting. Um, they're Besides all <laughs> stealing vegetables, which is riveting to me. Uh, they're all very exciting. One company we're funding is somewhat contrarian. We're doing non-Chinese, non-US, non-Facebook social games. Um, we're finding those, that, those in aggregate worldwide to be a substantial market that others are not going after. And, and it's difficult to go after them because you need a very strong localization platform. Which but you're saying build. non-social, non-Facebook. No, 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 social. Social games, but non-Facebook, non-US, and non-China. Because in the U.S., some companies are very strong. In China, some, countries are, some companies are very strong. And on Facebook, it's very difficult and very costly to do marketing. Okay. But there are still many non-Facebook social platforms around the world on which, uh, in aggregate, makes a very interesting market. Great. Thank you very, very much. Very interesting. I Thank really you for that talk.